What's going on, Jesse? Hey, man, how's it going? Pretty good. Uh, kind of ironic you're talking about black helicopters today. Uh, me and my son were out and uh, out about in town today, and uh, my wife was here at home with the other. So I gotta go, buddy. But call me back later. All right, brother. Sure will. Please do it. What's going on, Mr. Cooper? Hello. Yeah, that's one of my friends just called in. He's got an Apache over his house with camera pods and infrared taking film. We're going to play that on our TV show. This is just wonderful. We get followed around by unmarked police cars, openly taking 35-millimeter photographs of us. That's just wonderful, isn't it? Well, it's, uh, it's just uh, one other manifestation of the Nazi Gestapo police state, which has taken over this country. Yeah, it's just... Again, I mean, I get on this program six days a week, and I know how you feel when I talk to you this week. And, and I'm 24 years old. I'm ready to just say, screw it. Because you got these people cramming cheeseburgers in their mouth, and they love it. I mean, doesn't it ever anger you? Well, of course it does. What angers me most is the stupidity of the vast herd of American sheeple out there. Uh, they think they know something, and they don't even know what planet they're on, to tell you the truth. No, they don't. Simple things like private banks print the money and enslave everyone. Simple things like Clinton's a transnational agent. Well, your book, uh, Behold a Pale Horse, is well known to almost everybody that uh, has any know-how on any of these subjects. Um, you wrote that in 1988, didn't you, sir? Well, actually, I wrote it over a period of years uh, back beginning in the early 80s and continuing up uh, into about 88. I finished it, I believe, in uh, 89. And I may have added a couple of things in 90, and then it was published in December of 1990. December of 1990. Mm-hmm. How many copies are out? Quite a few? I have no idea. It's been the number one underground bestseller of all time with no advertising whatsoever. Um, and... Uh, People sell it on the street corners in New York City. Barnes & Noble uh, had to take it off the shelf in their New York City bookstore because, it's, uh, by their own admission, it's the most stolen book in their inventory. The most stolen book in their inventory. Yeah. Well, I know people have got tons of them around here. Why don't you tell people, sir, just uh, basically an overview of what Behold a Pale Horse uh, tells the public. And now it's even more incredible that so much of what you've written has come true in the last eight years. Uh, yeah, every prediction that I ever made has come true, except for one. And, uh, that was the, that was only because I had not realized that they had gone as far as they have. And that prediction that I was wrong about was that the Manuel Noriega could not be tried in American court and sentenced to an American prison as he was the head of a sovereign nation and thus had diplomatic immunity, just like anyone he would send to our country to represent his country. And, um, uh, of course, that certainly proves that no one in the world is safe now from the encroaching New World Order, and uh, they can go after anybody they want to, including the President of the United States, if they want to. And uh, Americans don't understand that. They think... Uh, we can go after somebody uh, that's the head of a foreign country, but we're still safe. We're, we're not safe. Nobody's safe anymore. That's because the global mafia runs things, and our president's just a little drill bit that they, a, a little front man, a little pitch man. Hello, sir? I'm sorry. Go ahead, my wife. I understand. Well, I know you're, um, we'll get into what's been going on there in, in Arizona a little bit later. I really appreciate you taking out the time to do this program with your busy schedule. Where do you think things are going to be in the next two years? Well, either Americans are going to wake up and they're going to stand up in unison and, uh, and, and take up arms and challenge the federal government to step back within the boundaries of the Constitution, or there's going to be a civil war in this country. Uh, the only alternative to that is total enslavement of the entire human race on a global scale. Uh, because that's where this is going. This is all about a one-world totalitarian socialist government. It's about destroying all existing nation-states, uh, destroying all existing religions, save the religion of, of those who are bringing this about, which is the secular humanist socialist religion. That way you can devalue human life and kill people. Well, but they're already doing that. Yes, they are. And they've already convinced the American people that it's okay. The people whose ancestors came to the New World to escape religious persecution in the Old World 
stood and watched the Branch Davidians burn, including all of their children, all of their women, and they cheered and said uh, that it was, uh, it was because they were a bunch of religious fanatics. I heard Christians say that. I heard Orthodox Jews say that. I heard uh, Baptists say it. I heard Catholics say it. And to their shame, I have to tell them that they are not religious, moral people. They are stupid, ignorant sheeple who are on the, uh, the verge of enslavement, and they're going to deserve exactly what they get. I have no sympathy for them whatsoever anymore. I used to. I used to cry big alligator tears for them in their ignorance, and uh, I used to do everything I could to wake them up. I've drawn my line in the sand, and I'm going to do what's right by God, and I don't give a damn who cares or, or who likes it or who doesn't. Uh, even if it means I have to door, die on my on my doorstep. Well, now we're getting to what's been happening. They are the feds are have are saying that they that you didn't show up for a court date, but they never gave you a subpoena, did they? We have never received any subpoena, no notification, no nothing. No nothing, and now the newspapers are reporting that uh, militia man. They don't say best-selling author military veteran, no criminal record, William Cooper, they just say they just say Arizona militia man tax fraud and bank fraud <laughs> is refusing to to come in to the loving arms of Janet Reno. Not only will I not come in, but if the Civil War has to start right here, it will. I am not a tax fraud or a tax cheat. I pay all legal, lawful and constitutional taxes which I am required to pay. I've never defrauded any bank or any person in my entire life, and uh, I will protect my rights with the tools given to me by the founders in case it should ever come to this. And uh, if, if the rest of the sheep will uh, want to proceed into the pens and get sheared and then uh, continue up the ramp to the slaughter, uh, that's their business. No now, matter what happens here, I win. Some people are sitting back and saying, listen to Mr. Cooper, talking about people being killed. That never happens. Go governments never do that. Every government in the world this century has engaged in slaughter. Almost every government. Look at the giant death, hole, uh, death toll that so-called communists. It's in the hundreds of millions this century. Why do, they have, why do we have to look at the communists? It's happening right here in the United States. It has been for quite some time. The, the only ones that have reached the public eye are the uh, Weaver family and uh, the Branch Davidians in Waco, Texas. But it's happened on a large scale all across this country in every state. It usually is contained at the local level. And uh, one of the indications that, uh, that, that you will know that, that I'm right is that you haven't seen what's happening here on any of the major news networks, and you're not going to. Because I've taken a stance documented in the law. I've posted it on my web page. I have uh, uh, stated that I am a portion of the unorganized militia of, of the state of Arizona and the United States of America for many years, uh, and uh, that my, my stance is well grounded. I'm right. I have a right to do what I'm doing. And anybody that comes up here and tries to encroach upon my rights or take away the protection of the Constitution from me and my family is going to get a bullet. And, uh, and, and that's. Just the way it is. Just to go back to what you just hinted at is the compartmentalization of news. We stopped, myself and a few others in this town, stopped the Delta Force from coming and doing secret military training and paying off our police chief. Now, the San Antonio police chief, a man uh, that you ought to be aware of, is Al A. Philippus, and I went down and got an interview face-to-face -face on videotape, and I've actually played the audio here on the show several times, where he said they tried to bribe him. They were very unprofessional, they no was never no, they were out of their jurisdiction, and they wanted to use live ammunition. They're practicing taking over police stations. Shouldn't our police realize that they're going to be some of the first people that will be going? Well, they might if they weren't stupid sheeple like the rest of the herd, but the truth is the policemen came right out of the community where the sheeple live. Why would anybody think that they're going to be any smarter than the rest of the animals out there? So you'd think that most of them will go along. When I told Philippus to his face on tape, I said, well, what you've done here, sir, you're probably going to pay for in the future. Well, it's, it's absolutely true. He's, he is a, is a big exception. There are only about three sheriffs in the entire country who know what their authority is and have the, have the guts to take a stand. This is the only police chief that I've ever heard of who's taken the proper stand. 
So if you want to know if they're going to go along with it, yeah, they'll go along with it to get their little paycheck. See, they've sold their country out for what, $20,000 a year, $30,000 a year? That's pretty cheap, isn't it? It's pretty sick. <laughs> it is. And, and for maybe they'll get a retirement check in 20 or 30 years. So they sold their whole country out. They sold their children's future. They sold their grandchildren's future and their great-grandchildren, whom they haven't even seen yet. Now, Mr. Cooper, I understand what you're talking about, and I find out more every day. Just, just a year ago, I still couldn't accept some of this, and it, it I mean, even you, you yourself, when I talked to you last week, said it took you years of studying a long time ago to finally understand it all, and it people's mindset, they think of the government as made up of the same go-along, get-along. They don't understand the avarice and just how vicious and demented and inbred these people are. Well, in the first place, you're wrong in, in your premise. They don't think at all. That's why commercials are 30 seconds long. That is the attention span of the average American sheeple. They can't think beyond 30 seconds. That's why no American company our, our, our business, our group plans ahead more than about two or three months. That's true. We have no long-term strategic goal for this country. It's, it's... That's right, and that's why we're getting beat by the Marxist, socialist, communists, because they have five-year plans, 10-year plans, 15-year plans, 25-year plans, and 50-year plans, and they stick to them. Man, absolutely. Well, it's scary then. What's going to happen? It's just going to be, I think that... Either the American people are going to become slaves within just a few years, uh, and it's going to be an enslavement like, like nobody can even dream of, uh, and, and it's going to extend worldwide, and we're the only people that can stop it because we're the only people in the world uh, still who have the, the capability... Have the arms. ...and the arms to be able to stop it. Or there's going to be a civil war which will last between 5 and 15 years to restore constitutional Republican government and freedom and liberty worldwide. Well, that's the point. Even though most people are sheep, there, there is that between 5 and 10 million people that once it starts, I think more people will come out. And I, see, I don't want this to happen. This is just going to wreck the nation. I don't want it to happen either. Ever since I saw the plan back in 1971 and 72 when I was uh, on the intelligence briefing team for Syntax Fleet to bring about one world totalitarian socialist government, and when I saw that the United States was behind the whole thing, this is not coming from without. The United States created the United Nations. Yes, the United States created the European Union that has just been formed. Well, you're saying the United, the United States. States is acting as the world's police force right now. Well, you're saying the United States. Wouldn't you say a foreign aristocracy out of New York and Boston nope. that controls our nation? The United States. Okay, who? The United States. It's with its headquarters in Washington, D.C. District of Columbia. It is the stated and avowed policy of the United States government to create world government over the ashes of all sovereign nations and existing religions around this world. Why don't you... I'm telling you that I saw that plan while I was in the Office of Naval Intelligence on the intelligence briefing team, the Commander-in-Chief of the Pacific Fleet. Would you elaborate on that uh, just a little bit? That's what the Hold a Pale Horse is all about. I understand. <laughs> That's what's in that book. Well, I know the story, but a lot of people that are listening, and I'm sure that we'll go out and get me hold a pale horse, will talk about those military briefings. And I guess uh, these people were proud that they were part of this power? Oh, absolutely. This has been a goal for this. It's the reason this country was founded, and Americans don't understand that. The founding fathers, many of them were deists. They were members of the secret societies. Some of them were members of the Illuminati. They created this country and gave the common man freedom for the first time in the history of the world, made him a king in his own right. They told him what he had to do to keep his freedom and what he would lose if he didn't do it. And when they did this, giving the common man freedom, it toppled all the kings and queens off their thrones all around the world, and that was the major goal of establishing this country. If the common man could have been vigilant and maintained his freedom and not given in to the I want and I want, and I deserve, and you've got to feed me, and you've got to do this, and you've got to take care of me, and change my diaper, and wipe my butt, and, and get me a job, and entertain me, and all that kind of stuff, 
which always leads back into what they call democracy, which always leads into socialism, which end goal stated by Marx and Lenin is communism. What did you the first think? That democracy is absolutely indispensable to socialism. What did you first think when you saw saw this openly being discussed? in the top levels of the military. Well, it shocked the hell out of me, but they thought I was one of them. It was an accident that I got in there. I'd been a member of the Demolay Society when I was 13 years old, only attended three meetings, and then my father was transferred to Japan. I never saw another lodge and never went to another meeting, and that was the end of that. And then I filled out all my documentation for my top secret USI security clearance, which was required to be able to work in the command center and on the briefing team at Syntac Fleet. Um, I didn't see DMLA on there, so I checked Freemason. And when I checked Freemason, that's what opened all the doors and, and uh, got me the security clearance and put me in those positions to be able to see what I saw. And I think the hand of God was working when that happened so that I would be able to warn his people of what was coming. And I've been doing that ever since. And I didn't see absolutely everything, but I saw enough to give me uh, an, an edge and a, and a vast head start on anybody that's ever lived before in the public sector that's not normally privy to this information. And I spent uh, the last, well, ever since uh, researching to, to find out what it all meant and where we're going. Well, just to go back to what's happening here locally in Central Texas, we know that there are dozens of different alphabet soup agencies that have the helicopters with the night uh, with the forward infrared with the forward infrared looking radar and all the rest of this. But why why are they gearing up like this? Why are why is our county building a three acre under the roof helicopter base? Uh, just the warehouse is three acres under the roof. Why are our police going and training? at Fort Hood with the military. What does this mean to the public? Well, because they know what's coming. They know that there's a hardcore group of American men and women who are, who are devout, religious, moral people, who love freedom, and are dedicated to the concept of liberty and freedom, and will fight to protect and defend constitutional Republican government against anything that comes along. And when, when that begins, it's it's going to be a, a terrible, terrible thing. I've spent most of my adult life trying to warn people and wake up enough people so that this did not have to happen, because I know it's going to be terrible. Now, President Clinton has now openly come out, and I'd actually read what they were pushing three years ago when I was talking about it, about the national ID card and biometrics, thumb scanning, retina scanning. And since 94 in Texas, they've been thumb scanning us to get driver's license, and people just stampede in there like sheep. We had a big protest down there where I was arrested, I guess it's six or eight months ago now. What does it mean to the public when we have one card that our insurance and our credit cards and our bank accounts and our receipts and everything is on that one card? It means the public is stupid and they're already a hair's breadth away from total enslavement. If they had any brains at all, they would have said, no, I'm not taking that. And if you don't like it, that's tough. And all those businesses and all those driver's license bureaus and all those uh, the, the revenue that it brings in for all those cities and counties would have just evaporated in smoke, and they would have backed down and said, okay, okay, you don't, you don't have to do it. We'll, we'll do it another way. Uh, but they're too stupid to do that. They don't understand that the power in this country is the power of the people and that they don't have to do anything that's outside the bounds of the Constitution. And the government can be held within the bounds of the restraints that the Constitution put upon it that our founding fathers created so that the American people could never be enslaved. What is the they name? knew that, that yes. nobody could come and invade this country and enslave the American people. The only way it could be done is from within if the American people allowed it to be done. What is the main goal of biometrics, retina scanning, thumb scanning? In my opinion, it is total loss of control of your destiny. If the IRS doesn't like you now, they'll just come and take your house. If the IRS doesn't like you now, they'll just come and garnish your paycheck. But in the future, if they don't like you, they'll shut your card off. Well, let me give you a vision of the future. There will be no money. There won't be any driver's licenses. There won't be any insurance cards or anything like that. Everybody will have an account on a computer. Everybody will have a computer chip implant somewhere on their body that will access the computer. 
Everybody, when they go to work, will get so many credits for that work, and they can go out and wave their little computer chip in their hand or whatever it is under a scanner at the supermarket and buy whatever they've got credits to buy. And if they don't have credits, they've got to stay home until they get some credits. Let me stop you for a second. I read this almost every week at least once, and it's from the, set, uh, from the April 27, 1997, Time Magazine, The Future of Money. I'm sure you've read it. And get openly on page 51. And anybody out there that thinks that Mr. Cooper or I are BSing you, go read it. And it says the best part, now this is their words, the best part about it is your daughter in the near future can have a chip under her skin and you won't have to buy the drinks for at the bar. I mean, everything's insane about that paragraph. And the whole 10-page article is about how great the smart card is and then the chip. And as we know, Time Magazine is a filthy, elitist propaganda rag. So I can't see how anybody would deny this. But I guess most people only see it as a convenience. What's insane about it is that the American people think that that would be convenient or that that would be good for them. It is the ultimate in-run goal to enslave the populace and to steal what's left uh, that's not already stolen. Uh, by the the uh, the elite who are uh, engineering and, and and machinizing all of this stuff to to make it come about. Now, the, the, the goal of a debt-based economy is not to get caught stealing, and that's what they're doing: stealing the wealth and the substance and the nation right out from under us. And that's the only end result that can come out of a debt-based economy. And the only way that they can't get caught is if the people allow them. Go, to go to a cashless system. Then they can never get caught. But if they don't go to a cashless system, eventually the economy will collapse and they're going to get caught. That's exactly it. And in that's fact, why they want to go to a cashless system, and that's why they ultimately have to. Anybody understands how this economy works and what the end result of a debt-based economy where the interest is never created or are printed and, and the way that it works. It's a fiat Ponzi scheme. That it's got to collapse, or they have to go to a total, totally cashless system in order uh, that they don't get caught and, and are able to perpetuate uh, the theft. So what you're saying is is that we have a fiat Ponzi scheme, con game government uh, monetary system based on fractional reserve banking, and that the money machines are printing out of control. I talked to Congressman Ron Paul just a few weeks ago. And he said, yes, the Federal Reserve is printing 10% more money into the supply every six to eight months. So this is creating this false uh, prosperity, and the public just loves it. But meanwhile, they're just coaxing us in to this cashless society so the fairy tale can continue. That's exactly right. Let's go back. And, I will and the only way to keep no. it going until they do that is to keep creating more money, which creates more inflation, uh, which devalues the value of what everybody is earning and making, and that's why everybody feels more and more strained every year and keeps sucking more and more out of the system through the, the, the bogus Internal Revenue Service income tax system so that uh, they can keep from getting caught as long as possible. Oh, but that's been reformed. It got reformed last week. Didn't you hear? <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> oh, boy. Anybody that believes that is, is not playing with a full fact that ain't playing with a deck of cards. They're playing with the uh, matchsticks. Well, I'll never forget, Pre I mean, President Clinton got up there on TV six, eight months ago, or I guess a year ago now, and drew that big zero on a white piece of paper. And, th and then I had people coming up to me on the street saying, Mr. Jones, have you heard the, the budget's balanced, the deficit's fixed? That simple thing, it's like they're three-year-olds. Well, they are three-year-olds. That's their mentality. The average American uh, has never had an original thought in his entire life, or her entire life. And if they're not told what to think, they cannot think. And that's the truth. Clinton didn't do anything except eliminate the deficit. You know how you eliminate the deficit? You either don't spend as much so that you stay within the bounds allotted by Congress, or you have Congress pass more allotments so that you can spend more than what you need to spend. Yeah, I mean, I may... It is, did not pay off the national debt, did not balance the budget. Well, yes, if I could give myself endless pay raises, I could go out and buy skyscrapers and a thousand Cadillacs and a hundred Mercedes. 
as long as I just still not have a deficit. A deficit is when you spend more than what you've been given. Exactly. That's a deficit. So when he says we got a zero deficit, that means absolutely nothing except Congress is allotting more money for the government to spend because the government is not spending less. They're spending more than they ever have had. They are spending more, and they're using this to beef up the police state. It's obvious to anybody that that honestly looks at it. Back to what's happening with you. Now, I have run documentaries that you've been involved with many times here on television in Austin, and like Reichstag 95 and others, and those are uh, people said that those are the most educational and that they do enjoy them. But talk a little bit about how you were at the top of Bill Clinton's FBI list. Well, uh, ever since 1988, when I began telling the uh, the world, not just the American people, but the world, about Majesty 12, which is the plan to enslave the human race in a world totalitarian socialist government, uh, the merger of the, um, the military of the United States and what used to be known as the old Soviet Union under NATO, which is occurring now to create the world police force. It, most people don't understand that NATO... Uh, is is an arm of the United Nations. It was formed under yes. the auspices of the United Nations Charter and takes its orders from the from the Security Council. Warsaw Pact was also formed under the auspices of the United Nations Charter and uh, was an arm of the United Nations and took its orders also from the Security Council. The Cold War was a total farce, and that's why we never had any any uh, military conflicts with the Soviet Union. What is your opinion? of the U.N. passing its new world court? Well, if they've passed a world court, how can they have a world court if there is sovereign nations? Because sovereign nations are not subject to any courts but their own. <sighs> so how can they have a world court unless there's a world government to which sovereign nations have given up their sovereignty? Does the Constitution for the United States of America say that we are subject to the dictates or the jurisdiction or the rulings of a world court? Does it say that anywhere in the Constitution? No, it doesn't. And when I watch oh, the local news, not. and when I watch the local news, all I hear is how wonderful the United Nations is. Our oh. public are being indoctrinated about this. Sir, I know you, that uh, you didn't ask me about this, but do you have a 1-800 number or a number where people can order Behold a Pale Horse? No, I don't have a 1-800 number, and even if I did, they couldn't order it because I will not contribute to the to the debt-based destruction of our economy. And Talking about the credit cards. The property of the American people, so they can't order anything from us by phone. If they want to order something from us, they have to send blank postal money orders or cash. Behold a Pale Horse is $30 delivered to your door. And uh, you can order by sending blank money orders or cash to Harvest Trust in care of, and make sure you put in care of on the address, P.O. Box 2470, that's P.O. Box 2470, Eager, spelled E-A-G-A-R, that's Eager, spelled E-A-G-A-R, Arizona, Eight five nine two five. Once again, the zip is eight five nine two five. Say it all one more time. Harvest Trust in care of P.O. Box two four seven zero. Eager. Or excuse me, that's that's the wrong town. I'm sorry. Make it uh, in care of P.O. Box one nine seven zero, and the rest is okay. Harvest Trust. In care of P.O. Box 1970, Eager, spelled E A G A R, Arizona 85925. Well, I know you have a lot on your mind. Yeah, sorry about the mix up on the P.O. Box. It's 1970 and not uh, what I gave you. And for $30, this is a very large book. And uh, the illustration on it is uh, very interesting. It says the mouthful right there on the cover. Just to get back real fast to exactly what's happening with you and your family. You have no criminal record. You were honorably discharged from the military. You're an author, shortwave radio host, and you have a monthly newspaper. And suddenly they come out against you, the feds, and say that you cheat on your taxes from, from 92 to 94, but you told me on the telephone that you haven't been paying taxes uh, for 12 years. No, that's wrong. 
Okay. You've been paying legal taxes. Our files are paid the so-called income tax. To private banks. Only an excise tax. To private banks. For almost, uh, it's either 11 or 12 years. I forget which. I've never made a secret of that. I am not uh, liable uh, for the so-called income tax administered by the so-called Internal Revenue Service. And uh, I am not, uh, but I do pay all lawful and constitutional taxes, which I am required to pay and always will. Give us an example of a lawful tax. Well, a lawful tax would be a state sales tax uh, down at your local grocery store. A lawful tax would be a property tax uh, for which you paid for it with the fiat Federal Reserve notes instead of gold or silver coin. Um, you can't pay off a debt with a debt. So you never uh, really purchase anything in this country in this debt-based economy with the fiat Federal Reserve notes. All you do is take possession under a lease, and the ownership stays with the government. That's why you get a warrant deed when you pay off your house instead of the patent title to the property, and that's why you get a certificate of title when you think you paid for your automobile instead of the actual patent title uh, to that property. This is all being done with contract fraud, and people yes, can't it even... it is fraud. It's all fraud. That's why, I mean, I, thought, I, mean, I catch myself as I get deeper and deeper into this becoming more angry... Uh, more flat out, I guess I'm at the point where you said that you were several years ago where you're just sad about it because you see the people thinking they have a grasp of what's happening in the civilization. But I've read enough history, I know enough about the country and what's been happening to realize that pretty much everything that you're told in the media has lies weave right into it. Oh, yeah. The American people are standing inside the gates of Disneyland holding their e-ticket, which has expired. None of the rides are working, and they're just having a great time. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyways, I uh, so you think in the next two years we're headed into some... I didn't say in the next two years. I said in the next very few years. I don't have a crystal ball. God does not whisper in my ear. I'm not a prophet, and I'm not a psychic. Well, sir, but I can I'm none of those things I, either. From what I saw in that plan when I was with uh, O&I, and, I, and uh, what I have researched since then tells me that within a very few years, the American people are either going to be totally enslaved in the worst enslavement that you can even dream of, or there's going to be a civil war actively being fought uh, under the most terrible conditions in this country. Well, I don't have a crystal ball, but... It's pretty simple to predict what these guys are going to do now that they're out in the open. I mean, ten years ago it wasn't so out in the open. Now you turn on the TV, UN World Court, uh, Clinton pushes uh, national ID card. Uh, you turn on Lair News Hour. Secret military teams are trading with your local police. It's pretty much in your face now, and I don't know if Clinton wants to leave office or maybe he wants to go be head of the UN or something. Who do you think as leaders from your intelligence networks, do you think are on the horizon? Who do you think the next president will be? Do you think Why do I care? They're not my leaders, and it's not my government anymore. So the point they is... They have subverted my government, destroyed it from within, and my only hope is that I can find enough good American patriots who are moral, who are good men, who understand what liberty and freedom is all about, to go in there and restore constitutional Republican government in, by any method uh, that, that it requires, including the force of arms. So you, Otherwise, my children and my grandchildren mm -hmm. and my great-grandchildren are going to be slaves. So you've totally turned your back completely on the festering system. and It's not my system. It is not operating within the boundaries of the Constitution. They have thrown the Constitution out. It is treason in operation. There is a subversion of government going on as we speak in the halls of government throughout this country, not just in Washington, D.C. And uh, So you're saying it is criminal enterprise, incredibly sophisticated, controlling Hollywood, the universities, and the major mass media through foundation money and through control of finance, and all their whores and all their pumps and all their little agents don't mean a damn to you. You're going to take care of your family, try to educate the public, and just continue and just continue to prepare. 
and you're saying that you have not committed any crimes, you're not bothering anybody, and if the feds try to come and take your home and take your family, that you're going to oppose them with force of arms. Absolutely. They have declared war upon me and all patriots and everybody in this country who is a loyal uh, constitutionalist, who, uh, who who has taken an oath to protect and defend the Constitution against all enemies, foreign and domestic. And uh, if the Civil War has to start on my doorstep, that's as good a place as any. So the, fine with me. So the Civil War has to start. start. Somewhere, it might as well start right here. Now, the, the Federal Attorney General out there, uh, Mr. Is it Rivera? Jesus Rivera, um, he's saying that they're going to proceed against you with prejudice and caution. I think... Uh, well, you're reading... No, no, no. You're reading an article that you read in the Arizona Republic. Yes, I am. The Communist that Newspaper. Never tells the truth. I can guarantee you that that's not what he said. I can guarantee you that what he uh, quotes that, uh, that Sheriff Arthur Lee said is not the truth. Um, we spoke to Sheriff Arthur Lee last night. Arthur Lee says that I'm right, that he has jurisdiction over the feds in this county, and he has told them not to come in this county and harass this family. Absolutely. Well, we've learned that with the press, that they will flat out not not twist the truth, but when they need to, they will flat out lie. Flat out lie. Flat out lie. <laughs> flat out lie. Well, that's great, then. Uh, you're not in too much trouble if you've got the sheriff on your side. People don't realize the power of the not sheriff. the sheriff. This is, this is a, a good American community here, and uh, there is a very strong militia, and uh, uh, not just here, but good, solid Americans all across this country are, are, are sick and fed up, and, uh, and we know that if they, if they attempt anything here, uh, there's going to be a war the likes of you. You know, you just you can't conceive of what's going to happen. What can people here in Central Texas do to try to fix what's happening to the federal government? Or, or are you saying now it's so shot? You cannot fix it. It cannot be fixed. Cannot be fixed. All we can they're not, do. They're not going to let anybody fix it. Your vote doesn't mean a damn thing. And if you haven't figured that out yet then you're too far gone to even be listening to me. Exactly. That's what Congressman Ron Paul, and I was shocked when even he said that. He said uh, to me in the past and to my associates that uh, all he can do is try to get the word out up in Washington that he really doesn't have any power. All he can do is try to raise alarm bells about uh, fascistic, uh, communistic legislation that comes rolling past him every day. And he said that uh, he thinks things are far gone. I said, so, sir, the sun is setting on on the republic and he goes well it's it's pretty much already set and and we're going into this thing full bore and uh that's why the socialists talk about the new dawn what is the new dawn the new dawn is the fruition bringing to fruition of the the new world order their totalitarian socialist utopian world. technocracy technocracy too sir doesn't technology tie into their little fun games with the uh, technology their biggest weakness I just hope they cling to their technology with all they've got I hope they train every soldier to use computers and and not be able to function without a satellite uplink and all of that stuff so we can just kick their butts all the way back to Washington D.C. and 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 try them for the crimes that they're guilty of. So I don't want to get into the things that uh, you've already sacrificed and done for your country, but uh, you've actually been threatened quite a bit, and people have actually attempted to try to kill you, haven't they? Oh, yes. Almost succeeded a couple of times. In fact, uh, you lost... My head caved in. I've lost my left leg in this fight. Uh, we've been shot at. We've been threatened. We've been... They've made it so that we couldn't work for anybody. Uh, you know, that's exactly what happened to the Founding Fathers. They lost everything. They lost their families. They lost their children. They lost their wives. They lost their property. They lost limbs. Um, they lost everything. And it was only really 2% at the start of the revolution that, that uh, got it going, wasn't it? Well, I believe it was about 3.8% of all the people in the colonies uh, helped found this nation and fought the Revolutionary War to create it and give what they call their posterity, uh, liberty, and freedom. And the United States government was created to protect the rights of individuals, whether or not they voted. 
no matter what happened, they were supposed to stay within the bounds of the Constitution and protect the rights of individuals and guaranteed us in that document constitutional Republican government, not just in Washington, D.C., but in every state, every county, every city of this country. So, Mr. Cooper, you think that that the feds may be backing down simply because you're in a strong community, or do you think they could just fly over one night and uh, launch a hellfire attack with a... doesn't matter what they do, they lose, and they know it. They've stepped on their dicks this time, no matter what they do, they lose, and they know it. Because if they make a martyr out of William Cooper... Not only that, I'm right within the law. I am right under the Constitution, and I am right within the law, and it's all posted on my website so and the Internet. So you're saying you've dotted all your I's, you've crossed all your T's. Absolutely. You've drawn and your line in the do, sand. They lose. They either back down and get within the bounds of the Constitution, they lose. They come up here and they kill us all, they lose. And we're still free. Now, a lot of people aren't going to understand that. But I'll still be free. No, you were mentally that. free. You didn't You didn't bow down. You didn't play the game. You didn't compromise. You died with your morals and with what you believed, and you were not altered by their propaganda or their intimidation. That's right, and none of us are afraid. We are Christians. We know that if we do the right thing, God is going to smile at us when we get to those pearly gates. However people view those pearly gates, I don't care. Absolutely. Well, sir, again, I really appreciate you taking out this time to speak to people here in Central Texas. I'd like to give out the website because that's where people can get the documentation in the law and see what's really happening and understand why we're right and not just blowing smoke and, and understand that this is the stance that they're also going to have to take if they want to be free. Yes, sir. Um, people who are not willing to die for freedom can never have it. That's the law of the universe. Will you stay with us for a break? Because I've, uh, I'm actually behind two breaks. And sure. if you stay Just with us. Give out the website, though, because i got to get going, too. Okay. Uh, go ahead and uh, give out your website, sir. It's, uh, there's, there's no www. It's just harvest-trust.org. Harvest Trust. Har no, it's not Harvest Trust. It's harvest-trust.org. All righty. Well, sir, I really they go appreciate there. They're going to be absolutely amazed. Well, I've been there several times, and it is a lot of good information people will see. And I, I uh, do respect you, and and I, uh, I certainly hope that the feds do back down, because I know that once a revolution does start in this country, and we've had a couple of them, that it's not going to be a pretty one. And that's it. The whole thing starts, and I know that I'm on the list. And I've heard a lot of people say, you know, I want to be on all the lists at the top of every list. Well, I'll do what I have to do, but tell you the truth, I don't want to be on all their filthy lists. Uh, if you're not one of them, there's only one list, and you're already on it. So stop worrying about it. <laughs> do what you're supposed to do. Absolutely. Well, Mr. Cooper, thanks a lot for being with us this evening, and uh, I'll be following what's going on from here in Austin with the controlled media and uh, try to keep in touch with you and find out what's happening. And I've been very tempted to try to come out to Arizona, but I figured that you had everything under control. I was just going to come out and probably do a news story, but I don't have the time either. And if they kill you, well, who knows, it may explode here too. And uh, they've got their little unmarks driving around and all the rest of the behavior going on. And I'm sure sad that there's elements of our federal government and a lot of dupes that work for them uh, that really don't know who they're really working for. What would you say to the law enforcement officers out driving around in their cars? Because I get a lot of calls from them on this program. Uh, well, the only thing I can say to them is they're not going to like being slaves either. That badge and that gun isn't going to give them any special privileges in the New World Order. In fact, if they'll read State Department Publication 7277, they'll find out that most of their law enforcement agencies are going to disappear except for a small group uh, that will be just used to maintain internal order once they have everybody in the bonds of enslavement. And uh, also, if they study the history of socialism and communism, everybody who helped socialism and communism come to power are the first people that they eliminate once they have uh, welded the last chains in place. Because, especially the intelligence yes, I say this all the time, because they were the people that helped get the establishment into full command. They know how the system works at certain levels. They're the biggest threat. It's, it, it's just like this. Whenever some little slime ball comes up to the gate and, and opens up 
the castle gate and lowers the drawbridge for the enemy to come in. The first person the enemy kills is that traitor because the enemy knows that next week that little rat traitor is going to open the gate for somebody else. That's right. That's it. They'll go against the Constitution now. They'll go against socialism later. Absolutely. It's as simple as the nose in your face. So all you little traitors marching around out there think you're going to going to be some big whiz in this new world order. Uh, you're not. You're going you're gonna to be right up there on the, on the scaffold hanging with the rest of them. Well, sir, again, Mr. Cooper, have a good one, Anna. Thanks, uh, thanks for being with us this evening. Again, this is all, I guess it's not good news. It's not bad news. It is just the news. And I'll be trying to keep in touch with you. God bless. You too. Take care.